Hi, this is Federico with Cuddle and in this short video I want to show you how to manipulate text so you can join all the letters and cut them as a single shape. These can be useful for making things like stickers or other decorative objects where you want a word or a sentence to be a continuous shape that gets cut in one piece so you don't have to do the work of gluing all the letters separately after the fact. So we'll start by looking at fonts that work for doing this kind of thing. And we'll first join a single word. Then we'll talk about more advanced tips for changing the spacing between the letters and the different lines. And finally, we'll see how to edit some of the shapes that are separated by default, like the dots on the eyes or the accents and sometimes the capitalized initials of a word. So let's get started. So here's our blank project. And to get some text onto the canvas, we need to drag it from the left hand side and place it where we want it. I'm going to put it at the origin. Now that text is going to have some properties that are visible on the right hand side. And I'm going to type what I want to appear. I'm going to use a name that's going to be our example. Now I'm going to change the font. And I think you'll find a lot of suitable fonts in the handwriting category. I'm going to click on it and scroll through it to see what there is. I think something like that could work. Um, essentially anything where the letters are like touching each other. I'm going to choose Pacifico. And now I'm just going to change the fill so we can see the word a little better. So here it seems like all the letters are joined, but I'm going to show you what this looks like if I cut it. So as you can see, all these sections where the letters overlap get cut, which is not ideal, not what we want. So now back in Cuddle, in order to make all these into a single shape, what we need to do is select it again and then join it by using a modifier. So. I'll go to the modify menu and apply the boolean union. So now we can see that all the letters are joined into a single shape. And so now when I cut it, it should be a single one. I know you're probably thinking, what about the dot on the eye? But I'll get to that in a couple of minutes. First, I want to show you uh, more options. So if I select my text object here, um, one thing we can change is the horizontal spacing of the letters to make it a little bit less crowded, perhaps. And I can change that by changing the letter spacing option here. So I think I can add a little bit. And I think that that could look all right, a little bit less crowded. Uh, another option is that if I want uh, multiple words, I can add them here in the text box. So I'm going to add the vampire. I'll zoom out a little bit. And I'll probably want all these text to be centered. So I'm going to change the alignment to be centered. And if I want all of these to be a single shape, I can modify the vertical spacing between the lines. So while selecting my text, I will change the line height until I have them touching a little bit. So now I want to add another line and change a couple of details. So I can click on my text, then go back to the properties and give Marceline her title. And perhaps I can still change the letter spacing a little bit if I need to, or the line height. And at this point, I want to do something about those eyes. And I realize that I also need to move the Q to be touching the U. So it's attached to the rest of the things. So I'm going to duplicate this component because the next change is going to be a little bit destructive. So I'm going to go to the left and then duplicate the components. And then I'm going to call this one the eyes. Now let's fix those dots and that Q. I'm going to delete 
the boolean union by selecting it and pressing delete so it's a little bit easier to explain so currently the i character behaves as a single shape although it's composed of the stem and the dot so i need to separate it into its component shapes so i can manipulate the dot in order to do that i select my text and i can go to edit convert to paths so now instead of a text component that i could change by changing those parameters on the right what i have is a collection of shapes and when you convert text into paths it gets grouped in a way that makes it very convenient to manipulate it so we have a whole group that we can move around that's our main thing we don't do those changes and if i want to uh, manipulate the subgroups I can double click and I enter this sort of focus mode uh, which I can know because there is this highlight around it this sort of spotlight effect and now I can manipulate the individual lines so I could change Marceline the vampire or the queen I'm gonna undo those changes and then each word is composed of smaller groups so if i double click on the eye for example you'll see that i can move the eye around i'm going to return it to its place and i'm going to zoom in and the eye is composed of two separate shapes so i'm going to double click on the dot now you can see that the spotlight is only over here and if i click on that i can still move it i find it more convenient to use the arrow keys when I'm doing this kind of thing so I'm going to move it down until it touches and we'll see that there is a sort of intersection here so that intersection it's because this is a compound path which is something I'll explain in a moment but the way we're going to deal with this is that we're going to select the dot then we're going to hold shift and we're going to select the stem and then we're going to do the same thing we did at the beginning. We're going to apply a Boolean union. So I'm going to go to modify and apply union. And so that joins those two shapes. Now to get out of this focus mode, I simply click on the outside of any other shape. I click on the canvas and it progressively gets out of the group. And now we have our dot joined to the eye. So let's do the same for this other eye. So I'm going to double click to focus onto the lines, then double click again. That focuses onto the word. Double click again. Now I have the eye. Now I can select the dot. I'm going to move it down with my arrow keys. Now I can hold the shift key so I can select two things at the same time. I'm going to select the dot and then the stem. I'm going to apply a boolean union and then I'm going to get out of this focus mode by clicking on the canvas and then last I'm going to change the cue I'm going to move it a little bit to the right so again I'm going to focus on the cue by double clicking on it and I'm going to select it and then I'm going to use the arrow keys to move it to the right and perhaps now that that moved all the way to the right then I need to move the word queen a little bit to the left so I'm going to double click outside of that selection then I'm going to select the word and again I'm going to use the arrow keys a bit to the left and maybe a little bit higher something like that so when, I, when I'm done I'm going to click on the canvas so I get out of the selection and now I'm going to select the whole thing and apply a Boolean union. So now this whole thing should be a single shape. So this is a quick explanation on compound paths. A compound path is a collection of two or more paths that interact with each other. So here I have a rectangle and a circle and I'm going to convert them into a compound path and I'm gonna give them a fill so it's a bit more clear. So when they are separated like that, like in the case of the dots on the eyes, they just simply behave uh, as a sort of group. Uh, if you move it or resize it, they, they stay together. Um, but if I 
move the circle into the rectangle, you'll see that it creates a, a sort of intersection. And if I put it in the center, it cuts a hole. So that's why a lot of the letters are made as a compound pad, because like an O or a P will have a hole in the center. And there are, of course, more complex interactions that don't necessarily apply to letters. So for example, if we were to add another circle to our compound pad, you'll see how you get a sort of complex mix of intersections and overlappings. Now as a sort of review and final example, let's do a word in Spanish. So it has an accent. Uh, I'm going to grab a text component. And you're probably familiar with the word broccoli in English, but in, in Spanish it has an accent. So it will be... It sounds pretty much the same. Um, I'm going to use the Pacifico font. And it's all, all connected together. I'm going to change the alignment to the center. Perhaps make the letter spacing a little bit bigger. And when I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and add a fill so it's more readable. And I'm going to convert it to paths. So I'll go to edit, convert to paths. Now I want to move that accent down a little bit. So I'm going to double click to enter the focus mode and then double click again. Select the accent. I'm going to bring it down so it touches the O. You can see that I have that intersection. So now I need to select the accent and the O by holding shift. Then I'm going to apply a Boolean union just to those two. And I'm going to double click out of focus mode. I'm going to go back to do the eye. So double click in, select the dot. I'm going to move it down with the arrow keys, hold the shift key. So now they're both selected. Apply the Boolean union. Now that I dealt with the letters, I think something you might want to do is make a sort of stake or something for either a cake topper or a, or a marker. So I'm just going to grab a rectangle. I'm going to type 0 0.5 inches for the width. And I'm going to call this something like 3 inches. I'm going to move it down a little bit. Uh, so it's still touching the letters at the bottom. There, so there's a little bit of an overlap. And finally, I'm going to select it all and then apply a boolean union. So this little broccoli marker is ready to be cut. I'm going to cut it and show you the results. I hope this was helpful and please leave any questions you have in the comments. Thank you for watching.